Hello. So today is going to be a unique video. I am going to be showing educators how to use uh, applications like uh, Google Meet and um, Google Classroom to actually manage uh, role-playing games for their kids. Now I know that there's a lot of software out there, a lot of um, online software as well, you know, Roll20 being a prime example, excellent, excellent um, software um, for running games, uh, but this is kind of uh, just another tool that you can have in your uh, quiver, uh, and since it is all falling within the boundaries of FERPA and COPA compliance, it might be easier for you to be able to pull it off um, in your uh, in your uh, classrooms. So to jump right in, uh, let me start with the classroom. And I am going to go to a classroom. And I'm going to open up a classroom. So now, my name is Bbars. Don't know if I mentioned that already. Um, this is, I, I actually created a game for kids called Power Outage. One of the adventures is trading spaces. Um, so I'm creating a Google Classroom that is designed for that game, but this is really just for any kind of role-playing game that you're going to be playing. Just I'm just using my game because I have the rights to use my own imagery. So um, this is the space. Um, I don't know if you've ever used a Google Classroom before, but if you haven't, um, you simply click on your application launcher and then you go to Google Classroom there. Um, now some places might, may or may not have um, enabled these tools. So you can talk to your uh, local uh, administrative technologists. Um, we allow these tools in, uh, in our school district. Um, and what do I have here? Um, so I don't want to go too deeply into the, the full mechanics of Google Classroom or the full mechanics of Meet um, because there's tons of videos out there on how to use each application. I just want to give you kind of role-playing game specifics of things that you can do. Um, so here's the reason to use a combination of Classroom and Meet. Uh, classroom works great if you are organizing resources and making them available to your kids. And Meet is great for um, accessing those resources and communicating and collaborating remotely, especially in situations like uh, we find ourselves today where people are not able to um, you know, come into a classroom, join a club, what have you. So. I'm just going to give you a couple examples of some resources that you can set up in uh, in Google Classroom. Um, from your stream, you can put anything you want, of course. Uh, here, for instance, I put a link to a Google Meet so that they would know where to return to each time. Um, not necessary, of course. You can just start up a new one whenever you've rescheduled a, uh, a session. Um, now we can jump to Google, to um, Classroom, Classwork, sorry. And uh, let's take a look at some of the things that we have. Um, I can create a quick reference sheet and pop that up there for kids. Now everybody, now these are materials. Um, so when I go to create here, I'm creating a material. And materials allow me to add, you know title it, describe it, and then add any type of file. So right off the bat, I can control a lot of different um, resources and make them available to my kids at all times. So if I want to make materials available to them such as just in-game how do you play, these are the ways that you play the game, resources, I can make those available. So like for instance right here I have my uh, quick reference guide. Um, this is invaluable if your kids are swapping back and forth between wanting to look up, like you know they get their own basic GM screen. Or player screen. Um, 
I can also create materials that are content specific to the adventure. So for instance, if I wanted to go deep into something, I can create a, um, a guide to the city that they're going to be playing in. So now I can create this information in Google Docs and share it from there. Um, and then from here I can have, um, this can be stored automatically in my Google Drive uh, folder and it can have a ton of resources on images, how to get around all the different information that kids might want or backstory information about um, the place that the setting that they're playing in great stuff nice to, for them to have in mind when you're story building so that they can play off of the history of the environment that they're playing in uh, here is an example of a um, qu question that i asked so tell us about your backstory now, when you're creating a question, it gives you really two options, short answer or multiple choice. Again, great way of getting really key specific information from people so you can determine what you want. Um, let's say, for instance, you are the type of GM that front loads um, requests for equipment that they happen to find in their uh, exploration. You can set that up. Uh, for instance, I asked with this question, people to tell me their backstory. Now, even though it says that it's a short answer, in fact, when I look at it, um, I used my I am a learn account as a student, there are, you know, you can, you are not limited to how many words you can use, it seems. Um, or if you are, the limit doesn't seem to be all that uh, restrictive. So I could put in a full backstory if I wanted to, no problems. Jumping back to classwork. Here is um, a form. So now in this instance, when I'm creating an assignment, what's great about creating an assignment is when I add a resource. Uh, so for instance, here, I'm going to link to Google Drive and I'm gonna select uh, a uh, fillable sheet. Um, I can choose to change this option here and then make a copy for each student. Now all the students have uh, access to that f their own individual versions of the files. And as they submit their sheets, they have a copy, I have a copy. I can look back and forth um, uh, between uh, character sheets, um, which is great. Um, I could also um, session specific, create session specific information. So for instance, here is an example of a resource that I created, which has the map. Um, and then I can just easily jump into a um, puzzle or specific component to that map or environment or that session as we're playing through it. Uh, the other great feature with Google Classroom are is topics. I can break out individual topics for exploration um, within an adventure. Uh, this is great if you wanted to do side quests. You can um, you can create side quests for your uh, characters as they're playing along. Um, you can track information on the history of uh, of a specific character that you've dealt with, a specific uh, adventure that you've been going through, at a specific region that you've been exploring and you can create assignments basically within of those um, categorized um, topics so that anybody can now jump back into these and explore all the different kind of aspects of um, of the world um, so for instance here i another cool feature underneath uh, so i created one called explored character history so let's say i want the, the players to truly understand the character that they're going up against, the villain that they're going up against. Um, but I don't want to reveal who the villain is at first, right? So I could set up everything in advance. And as I'm creating the material and I'm adding the files, rather than let's just putting anything here, rather than posting the file, I can go here and save it as a draft. So I saved it as a draft. Now it's up there. Uh, one thing I could have done here when I edit the material is I could set it to a specific topic. And now 
It's not available to the players, but it's available for me so that I can post it at the point that I want. Oh, and I just kind of posted it, so I could just you know, reverse that if I had to. Um, so there is that option. Uh, let's see here. I can just delete that one. I don't like that. All right. So there you go. Google Meet, great place to um, share resources, access things that you need, uh, explore different topics, um, different side quests, different loca locales, tons of different options available to you. Um, you have the ability to invite, uh, you know, your students easily and manage them. Um, if you were creating some kind of point system, you can use grading to include points, um, just in case you are using your uh, environment for um, kind of like a uh, like an independent uh, activity where they can like like if you're using some kind of like badging system and such. Um, I can uh, also change some of these here. So let's go to. Uh, map here make it a little bit prettier right so I can uh, expand here and since we're in Shorai City I'm going to go right there and then that's my uh, banner so really nice features in Google Classroom now Google Meet is our um, shared resource I'm going to jump into a little bit of the specifics here I can create a, a Google Meet. I can give it a nickname. So, for instance, this is the out of. No, this isn't the out of the pen adventure. This is the trading spaces adventure. Right. Now I'm gonna hit continue. Now, I have the option, of course, of. Uh, oops, wait. Hold on. Let me switch. That get out of there. Let's refresh that. Sorry, I'm using uh, my camera in OBS, so let me just hit that up. Let's see here, green trading spaces. Let's see if that works without the camera there. Started, failed. Okay, I know why. I gotta get rid of it from OBS. So let's pop that off. Display. Nope, I don't. I wanna get rid of the video capture. Removing video capture. Goodbye. And removing video capture. Learn. We learn as we go. There we go. Now switching here and refreshing, and you will see. There we go. So now I'm in the uh, meet location. I am going to join and it gives me the information that I can now share with uh, my students. So I'm going to copy that information, share it, or I can add the students directly by inviting them to uh, the call. Um, other great features is it gives you um, dial in options. So you can dial in, call a number, um, and set that up. If I didn't want to stare at my mug all day, I could just uh, turn my camera off if I wanted to. Other great feature with Google Meet is it's got captions. So now I can click on this and it is captioning everything I say. Of course, it does have a problem anytime I say the word B-bars. Yeah, see. Uh, but, you know, it is okay. Um, the other thing I can do here, uh, of course, is uh, now I'm the only person here. Let me connect with my phone as um, the additional, per oh, let me invite a person here. So I'm gonna, let's see here, I'm gonna invite, add people. I am going to invite I'm a learn to the group. 
And from my phone, I'm going to try to access that. Now I'm going to have to mute when I connect IMLEARN um, because it will reverb here. So bear with me while I do that. Do, 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 do. Now, um, in our school, we have prevented uh, students from being able to um, create uh, Google Meet sessions. Um, um, but uh, teachers can set them up. So I am now just got to make sure that I am set as Meet as I'm a learn only lets you use Meet to join other classrooms. Got it. Okay. So now I am going to enter a meeting code here. Uh, or actually, I was invited, but I didn't feel like pulling up. Let's see here. What's the meeting code? Oh, or nickname. Oh, wonderful. So I can type in trading spaces here. Join meeting. And I muted that. Um, so there we go. So now I am uh, in my uh, you know, bad view up my nostrils, but get to see my deviated septum. So I'll put that right over there. That's not much better, but what are you going to do? Um, so there you go. There's my second student, or there's my primary student. Um, I'm going to uh, pin myself the rest of this video so that you can just be aware that there is a other person there but it's not you know visible uh what else is there um so i mean that's also a feature of course i can mute students i can pin students i can remove students if i have to students have the ability to chat um so it's not interrupting um gameplay um I can also allow students, oh, here's a cool feature that they just enabled um, until the end of the year. Um, I could record the meeting if I wanted to. So if I click on that button here, I can record the whole session. Uh, when I do record the session though, it does prompt um, kids to give their usernames and passwords. So, I don't, sorry, not give their usernames and passwords, but give permission to be recorded. Um, so just make sure you're doing that. Um, getting that permission in advance. Uh, what else is there? I am uh, set on that end. And now what I want to do is present. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present. Now I can choose um, an entire window. or I can choose a window or I can choose an entire screen. So what's great about that is I can pull this out here. And now it's a separate window. And I am actually going to drag this off screen to my second screen here, which you don't see. But from here, I can go to window. And I hope I don't have anything inappropriate up. I don't, so that's good. Great. Wonderful. And I'm going to hit share. And now I am presenting um, my screen. Let's see how that looks. Yep. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the... Oop. That's super bright. Um, the, so the student sees the uh, the uh, presentation. Um, so now I have a presentation that I can go, I can pin to that. And now I can do anything from a presentation view of, um, of, uh, of anything I want. So I could use Roll20, present, uh, my screen, share that with people. Um, I could uh, jump to classwork here. I can use my classroom directly and open up uh, information and share that. So if we are talking about, you know, using imagery, we can do that. Um, so again, here I can display myself or I could display my desktop or I could display a window on my desktop 
And from that window, I can share any re local resource uh, available to kids. So this is, again, just a great means of remote communication. Uh, anything that I have locally stored, I can make accessible and visible to all the students. Um, I can use captioning, which is wonderful. Um, and it's live captioning built into the system. Uh, I can use uh, my Google Meet environment, or sorry, my Google Classroom environment to store and share. Uh, I can post questions. I can expand uh, learning outside of the game um, by posing questions and um, you know, hypotheticals and discussion about uh, storytelling, uh, the role of the hero, the uh, you know moral. Uh, quandaries that we ran in through to through the game. Uh, if I'm creating historic events as part of my gameplay, I can review or test on those historic events. Um, again, uh, it's uh, I, I mean if we are if I had them solve a problem through role playing. And that problem is STEM related. I can go into a discussion about how that STEM field was, you know, how that STEM pro project was uh, run. Well, you know, what the uh, mechanics behind it were, what the physics behind it were. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is great if you are using um, role playing as a method of educating as well as uh, role play as just a um, as a form of uh, activity for students so yeah i hope that gave you a good understanding of everything that's out there and um, yeah thank you for your time take care